Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video on Dr. Zad. And today, I'm here at the Royal Cell Biotechnology, the first IVF lab in Pakistan for buffaloes and semen. And today we're gonna go meet some people and it's gonna be an exciting video. We're gonna learn about biotechnology. Let's go, because I have no clue on what it is or where it's from or how do you run it. So let's go learn something new today. Okay, let's run the graphics. Let's go. Well, welcome back to another video. I'm your host, Dr. Zad. And today, we're here with two people. Introduce yourselves. Hi, my name is Zafika Tahrim and I'm a biotechnology graduate and I'm working here as an embryologist. Hi, I'm Hadia Van. I'm a biotechnology graduate. I did my semester exchange from University of Kentucky and I work as an embryologist at Royal Cell Biotechnology. Okay, can you tell us a little bit about your field? Biotechnology is obviously not really popular in Pakistan because most of the people, they like, you know, doing MBBS or DVM. So I didn't choose this field. This field chose me because I had no other option when I failed my MBBS attempt. So then I did this and you know it's people think that biotechnology don't have a scope in Pakistan etc etc you have to you know move abroad and everything but I would like to tell that there is a scope in Pakistan we have some startups that are working in this field so it's pretty good so today we're here with I am Jeff Shizad I am actually director of right cell biotechnology okay. Pakistan yeah, I have done DVM and Masters from University of Veterinary and Animal Sciences, Lahore. And then I joined Buffalo Research Institute as a veterinary officer. After four years of services at Buffalo Research Institute, I moved to Guangxi University of China. There I did my PhD in animal breeding, genetics and reproduction. And just after completing my PhD, actually, I came back to Pakistan with an uh, Chinese investment and here we are doing some kind of buffalo embryo production in Pakistan. Main major purpose of us uh, is to actually produce buffalo embryos and then export them to China uh, so that actually Chinese breeds that is a, which is a swam buffalo actually we want to convert that swam buffalo into a dairy breed uh, which is Neely Ravi buffalo. So we are producing embryos from Pakistan and then exporting them to China. Right. So why is Pakistan's Neely Ravi so important? Yeah, you know, like for example, actually it depends upon the market. Right, like right now we are sitting in Pakistan and in Pakistan, uh, buffalo's milk price is just around 200 Pakistani rupees per kg. But when you when you observe its expenditures while feeding, actually it is around 190 and 200. So that's why actually cow is replacing the buffalo right now. But when you talk about the China, yeah, because buffalo uh, milk is more famous as compared to the cows and people would like to consume more buffalo milk. So that's why the price of the buffalo milk in China is around 500 Pakistani rupees. And that is why actually it is more important in China. So while I talk, because in China there is a swam buffalo and average of the swam buffalo is around 1000 liters per lactation. So by converting those swam buffalo into the Neely Ravi buffalo actually, they will double their milk production and later on when they will have Neely Ravi buffalo at China they will be doing some kind of molecular research and re they will run some of the genetic improvement programs and then they will improve the Neely Ravi buffalo as well. What's the future of biotechnology in Pakistan? I won't say that the future is very very bright if we are just depending on the government sector because I have worked in a few government uh, research labs as well but I would like to actually motivate students that they should be looking into entrepreneurship, bio-entrepreneurship and startups. There are many great things that students are doing these days. I see many students that have great ideas in bioinformatics and biotechnology. Africa is considered as the fourth largest milk producer mm -hmm. and we have I think around fifth largest population of the animals. What happened? In 2019, China did an agreement with Pakistan on foot and mouth disease. Yeah. And that agreement was useless until two years. When I came in 2021 with the investment in Pakistan, actually nobody had even that, even nobody knew that actually that memorandum or MOU on FMD between Pakistan and China still. Oh, wow. So what we did, we studied that MOU and we tried to convince government and right now actually Punjab government's 
administration is very nice and they are if i talk about the chief minister actually chief minister actually knows that what is fmd and how uh, what should we do to export some of the products from pakistan to china start their own startup and everything there's a startup wave all around the country so if if we if i look in this that way then the future biotechnology is really good in pakistan what kind of animals like use biotechnology like what can it be used for can it be used for like for example physical therapy biotechnology can be used pretty much everywhere and if we combine bioinformatics with that as well it's just like a boom really nice uh, but in our company like we are using biotechnology for uh, buffaloes for now but it can definitely be used for uh, cattle for uh, dogs like you know hounds or horses i'm just talking about specifically about ig yeah, right. but you know uh, sky is the limit when it comes to biotechnology you are in medical sciences or physiotherapy or uh, what not like you know plasma proteins and you know countless things so it's it's really great it's just like an ocean wow that sounds fascinating yeah what are some like interesting facts people should know about biotechnology like why should they join this field Number 1 as I already mentioned that it's an ocean so once you are a biotechnologist you can pretty much uh fit in every field you can go into agriculture you can go into industry you can go into pharmaceuticals you can go into uh livestock so it's like there's a huge diversity in biotechnology first and second uh, people think that you have to be really really smart about everything when you are a biotechnology student because it just covers a lot of aspects and uh, subjects but i would say that you should know more and more about less and less so when you start this field you have to be a little bit specific about what you want to do because it can be really wait fun. less you you should know more and more about less and less i mean to say that you should have a specific thing in your mind because otherwise you will be just wandering sometimes you would like to go into agriculture and then this and that all right you don't have a focus in one field when choosing your masters on phd because i faced this problem while choosing my own program for phd because you know i was sometimes i was in livestock sometimes i was in agriculture sometimes i was in ag industry that's like most of us in dbm especially this <laughs> yeah pretty much like that so does dbm like interconnect with to biotechnology biotechnology it's interdisciplinary biotechnology as i mentioned it can fit pretty much everywhere so yes like we work in this company which is mainly focused on animals and uh, reproduction but we are biotechnologists and we i guess we do a pretty good work here as well yeah well that's very cool as you can see here is biotechnology we don't know what's going to happen in boxin but i guess these two are going to show us what's the future and where's the other one <laughs> these two they're awesome people uh thank you so much for being on dr zad would you like to say anything to the viewers out there to the youth i would like to say don't give up i know things can seem pretty messy around here but never going to give you up come on you have to say something uh thanks for watching <laughs> subscribe, subscribe and please <laughs> tell ah uh, yep subscribe <laughs> press the bell icon over here thank you there you go thank you